Hello and welcome back to the channel this week. This week's episode is all about what lens are you? I know what lens I am, but do you know what lens you are? This is all about whether or not you're a 35 millimeter person or a 50 millimeter person. There they are right there. Now, for the longest time, when I was young and in my teens, I photographed with a 50 millimeter lens all the time. That was the only lens I had access to, was that 50 millimeter lens. And I got used to it, and I'll tell you, I started getting a little bit miffed at the fact that I couldn't go wider from the same length, or same distance, I should say, from my subject. So I decided to lobby for a 35 millimeter lens, and I got one. I got a 35 millimeter Sumeron, which is very, very inexpensive at the time. And it's a, th it's a thread mount, and it's got an M mount adapter on it, and it goes on my Leica, but I can put it on my, my Fujis, but the difference is the Fujis are a cropped sensor camera, you know, an X series camera is a crop sensor. So these lenses here are a 23 and a 35, which equate, equate to a 35 and 50 on the Fuji. So let's get on with this episode all about whether or not you're a 35 person or a 50 person. So let's talk about angle of view for a little bit. The 50 millimeter lens is gonna give you about a 47 degree angle of view. And the 35 is gonna give you about a 63 angle of view. So if you think about that in terms of how you approach your compositions of your subject, you'll start to get an idea what you like the most. Now, for, for me, I like to run out the door with a 35 millimeter lens or you know, a 35 millimeter lens equivalent, the 23 on the Fuji, on my X-T30. Small, light, easy to carry around. It's a wonderful setup. And I've been known to take out my new 23 1.4 as well. Now, it's harder for me to run out the door with the 35 this guy right here, the 35, which is a uh, 50 millimeter equivalent on my Fujis. And I've had to force myself to do it. And I gotta tell you that I have had some very interesting results by doing that. I'm gonna show you those right now. This is me shooting a 50 millimeter lens or a 50 millimeter lens equivalent. And I forced myself to run out the door with that and try to understand the angle of view, which is a lot shorter at 47 degrees. So here you go. These next few images were made with the Leica 50 millimeter Sumilux F1.4. And these images here, these next two here were made at a rehearsal for A Christmas Carol and the actor in the middle we were focusing on. This lens worked out absolutely perfect for this situation. And this next image here, I've been thinking about this because it reminds me of an image that I've seen over and over again by Weston or somebody like that. So the 50 was the perfect lens for this. Then I went to our local yacht club and I just photographed around the club. And, and I love this bright white towel that was used to clean the whiteboard off. And then inside the shed where all the paint and stuff is, I found this really interesting image with the, uh, the 51.4. Next, I went out and photographed along the waterfront, and I got this really interesting uh, white dinghy with its yellow seats. And I thought it looked kind of cool. I'm not really sure it's great, but it was fun to take it anyway. This shot here I've been thinking about for a while because this fence is just falling apart. This was made at f11 with the full frame camera to try and keep everything in focus not all the way in the back but just everything in front and i really love the symmetry of this right here uh, these benches with the fence in the background just perfect then we switched over to the or i should say i switched over to the 35 f2 and got this great shot in the fog of the schooner sitting at the dock then of course the shot here of the motif with the lobster buoys in the front uh, timeless shot that I've been uh, kind of waiting for here and there, and I finally found it. This next shot here is something I've shot a lot, but with the 35 F2, it really, that field of view really zeroes in on the door and the buoys. Next, I shot a picture of my flag outside my house. Really, really like this one. And then we move on to Essex, where I photographed 
um, around a antique shop and this <laughs> this great signpost is right in front and it's an it's an awesome shot so this next shot out front of the antique shop with the hats and the time letters it really made oh and, and the sailboat obviously really made the picture for me So since I received that little 35 millimeter lens, the Leica Sumeron back in like 1971 or 72, something like that, um, I've been enthralled with that particular angle of view, the 63 degree angle of view. And I have to tell you that when I started my career in photojournalism, I was using an M5 with a 35 millimeter Sumicron lens. And I just, I love that focal length and I use it quite often. And it's, you know, like I said, it's my favorite run out the door um, when I don't have anything else to, you know, I don't really want to carry a zoom lens, I want to carry a prime. And, you know, if you think about this, a lot of folks that are just getting new to this uh, photography thing, it's all about zoom lenses because that's what the kit lens is. And a lot of times, my students, I will say to them, listen, leave it at 18 or tape it there. If you've got a zoom lens, tape it at a different zoom range, like a 18 or a 23 or a 35 or whatever it is. Get a piece of duct tape and tape it there and don't take it off of there. And you'll see that your eye will change right away. So here are some images that I've taken with the 35 millimeter lens or the 35 equivalent lens with the Fuji. So here you go. This shot here and the next few images are made with the Leica 35 millimeter Summicron. This is at the tool factory and I love this orange insulation out front. This next shot was made at the Museum of Science in Boston and couldn't resist the shot. It was hanging on the wall by, I can't remember the photographer of Dizzy Gillespie. Then while I was out working at my job, the symmetry of the planting that was going on around this tree really made this shot here. This next shot coming up was made at a workshop I held out at Thatcher's Island in Rockport. And the guys are working around the property and it really made some great images. This shot here is also on the job. I was shooting the moving wall, the Vietnam moving wall, and I got this guy reminiscing. And it was really a touching moment. Then I stood in the cold Pacific Ocean and waited for sunset at... Um, Haystack Rock on Cannon Beach in Oregon. Then also in Oregon, I got the Japanese garden here, and I got this little pool of water with the bamboo spout here. Kind of cool. And now my favorite place that I switched over to the uh, 23F2 uh, by Fuji and got this shot of this window here, which is one of my favorites. <laughs> You've seen it before. And inside my local coffee shop, I really love the symmetry of all the stools and the light streaming in through the window. Really made an interesting picture for me. This next shot here is made with the, 30, the 23 1.4. And at 1.4, obviously, and I just love the steam coming off the coffee cup and the breakfast in front. This next shot here is at a barn up in Newburyport, which is of peppers hanging from the ceiling drying. And then I made this portrait of a uh, or, uh, organ maker and uh, at our church. And I did this with a 23 F2 by Fuji. And then this last one I'll leave you with was a run out the door and take pictures of my shed on fire. It got hit by lightning. What did I have? XT30 with the 23 on board. So some of you folks that have been around my channel a long time and I know are my age or a somewhat younger are pretty used to this. You've got your favorite lens. Might be a 24, might be a 21, might be a 28. Now for me, it's either a 35 or a 50. And those, back in the day, those were the two film lenses that you got more used to. Now, um, one thing I can suggest for you to try and figure out which one of these prime lenses would be good for you is to, if you have Lightroom Classic, go in and look at your metadata and see what focal lengths you photograph at the most. And you'll likely find out whether or not you're a 50 or a 35 person. So that's one way of figuring out what lens you are. Now, like I said, for me, I'm a 35. 
But you know what? Maybe I'll turn into a 50 person from time to time, go out and force myself to use that lens because I just don't use it that much. I gotta tell you, uh, when my boss at the paper said, we've gotta buy some kits for everybody and because everything we have is really old, what do you suggest we get? And we were into Canon at that time, and I, I said, you know, we gotta have a 24, gotta have a 35, gotta have a 50, 1.4, um, and I went down the line of, of prime lenses that we needed, because at that time, zoom lenses were not really all that good. So, everybody got a 50, 1.4. I never used it. I used my 24 most of the time for, for new stuff, and the 35 I didn't use as much, very interesting. So I hope you check out capeandphototours.com. We've got a great tour coming up in October with Bill Fortney, a Fuji X photographer. Please check out his channel, not his channel, excuse me. Check out his blog, which is Bill Fortney Photography. So uh, if you wouldn't mind, please give me a like and subscribe to the channel and comment. That would be great. And please share this video. That's also awesome. So that's it for this week. And remember, it's not what you photograph, it's how you photograph it, and we'll catch you next time.